For over four decades, Voyager 2 has journeyed alone through the vast void of space, faithfully transmitting whispers from the edge of our solar system. But recently, it did something unexpected. It turned back. Instruments once aimed outward suddenly pivoted inward. And what triggered this shift? A disturbing anomaly far beyond the reach of the sun's influence. NASA's team was blindsided. The data wasn't just cosmic noise. It was patterned, deliberate, intelligent. So what exactly did Voyager 2 encounter? Was it a software glitch or a message not meant to be found? Let's break it down. Into the Interstellar Abyss Since its launch on August 20th, 1977, Voyager 2 has traversed more than 12 billion miles of space, onboard tech weaker than a modern smartphone, powered by less juice than a nightlight. And yet this little probe accomplished the unimaginable. It visited all four gas giants and then pressed forward into the void, leaving the solar system behind. Over time, most people forgot it even existed. It faded from public attention, a relic from another era. But something unexpected has brought it back to the spotlight, and scientists are rattled. After breaching the heliopause, the invisible frontier where the sun's influence gives way to true interstellar space, Voyager 2 picked up something inexplicable. Not cosmic background radiation, not random plasma waves, but a signal a precise, repeating signal. And then the unimaginable occurred. Voyager 2 reoriented itself. Its sensors turned back, facing home, as if something behind it, something inside the black, had drawn its attention. Could it be a coincidence? Or did Voyager 2, built in the analog age, just stumble upon evidence we've feared for generations? That we're not alone. A journey like no other. Before delving deeper into what Voyager 2 encountered, it's important to revisit the epic scale of its mission. Launched during a rare planetary alignment, it was intended to take advantage of gravitational slingshots to swing past the outer planets, a grand tour through the solar system. Despite its rudimentary hardware, cameras less capable than those in budget phones and memory smaller than a calculator's, Voyager 2 made history it unveiled never-before-seen details of Jupiter's great red spot, discovered mysterious rings at Uranus and Neptune, and observed icy geysers erupting from Neptune's moon Triton. Then, in 2018, Voyager 2 made the leap. It crossed into true interstellar space, becoming the second man-made object to do so after its twin, Voyager 1. Unlike newer probes designed for short-term missions, Voyager 2 was built to endure. Even now, it draws power from a slowly fading nuclear battery. And while communication is diminishing, it's still online, still listening, still transmitting. And just when we expected its voice to finally fade, it spoke louder and more clearly than anyone could have imagined. The signal that shouldn't exist. NASA's Deep Space. Network detected the anomaly first, a disruption in Voyager 2's typically stable data stream. The plasma wave detector began recording unusual patterns, sharp, rhythmic pulses rather than the expected background fluctuations. Meanwhile, the spacecraft's magnetometer started registering consistent, structured distortions in the surrounding magnetic field. These weren't random events. The pulses arrived precisely every 3.142 seconds. Pi a mathematical constant, universal, intentional. Soon after Voyager 2, low on power, limited by age, somehow altered its orientation. It began pointing sensors back toward the solar system, breaking from standard protocol. This wasn't part of its design. It wasn't supposed to do that. Analysts fed the strange data into advanced models. The output was chilling a sequence embedded with mathematical harmonics, suggesting not just a pattern, but a message. Something or someone was trying to communicate. NASA's Quiet Panic NASA didn't go public, not at first. Only vague mentions of unusual data irregularities were made. 
But behind the scenes, things escalated fast. Signal specialists, cryptographers, and astrophysicists were pulled in. Defense analysts were briefed. Telescopes around the globe subtly redirected their gaze to Voyager's last known coordinates. And then everything went dark. The familiar background noise of the cosmos, the ambient hum of space, disappeared from Voyager 2's sensors. It was as though the probe had been isolated, cocooned. The sudden silence was terrifying. Nature is noisy. Perfect silence is artificial, intentional, controlled. Gravitational readings showed subtle, localized disturbances, suggesting the presence of something massive. But optical sensors found nothing. Whatever was affecting Voyager wasn't visible, or it was hiding. Worse still, Voyager 2 detected a narrow beam of high-energy particles aimed directly toward the inner solar system. Not scattered, directed, focused. Voyager 2 was no longer a distant observer. It had become the target. Something had noticed us and was responding. Patterns in the noise. As scientists worked tirelessly to decode the transmission, the signal revealed deeper layers. Within its structure, they found sequences aligned with the Fibonacci series. Harmonics based on the golden ratio. Not just intelligible patterns, but signs of understanding, of intelligence. Even the rhythm of the pulses mirrored human speech patterns. Not our language, but our timing. It was as if whatever sent the signal had studied us, learned our cadence, and was now speaking back. Nested within the plasma wave data were recursive patterns, data within data, arranged like memory structures in the human brain. This wasn't just contact, it was analysis, reflection, possibly interaction. Then came the most disturbing revelation. Elements of the signal matched Voyager 2's own source code. Somehow, remotely and without precedent, something out there had accessed the spacecraft's internal systems. It didn't just ping Voyager 2. It might have hacked it. Watchers beyond the veil. Unseen eyes at the edge. As scientists and defense experts pored over the strange data, a chilling hypothesis began to solidify. What if Voyager 2 hadn't just brushed against an unknown anomaly or passing object, but had instead encountered something enduring? A structure, a mechanism, a sentry placed intentionally at the outskirts of our solar system? This emerging idea, dubbed the Sentinel Hypothesis, proposed that our solar neighborhood might be encircled by a web of observational platforms, ancient devices seeded by a civilization vastly older and more advanced than our own. These sentinels wouldn't attempt contact. They weren't emissaries. Their sole purpose would be surveillance, to quietly monitor the rise of intelligent life within the reach of our sun. This concept wasn't entirely new. For years, thinkers had discussed the zoo hypothesis, a theory suggesting that advanced extraterrestrials might watch civilizations like ours evolve, much as we observe wildlife from a distance. But now, hard data seem to align disturbingly well with that once speculative idea. Suddenly, the encounter made more sense. The rapid reaction to Voyager 2 hinted at an automated protocol triggered by proximity. The numerical structure embedded in the signal resembled a kind of universal logic, a non-verbal acknowledgement. And then, silence. Not the kind of silence that follows a failed conversation, but the stillness of something returning to its post, quietly resuming its watch. Military assessments offered an even more unsettling perspective. What if these were not simply passive sensors? What if they acted more like enforcers, a kind of galactic containment system, activated only when a species reached a certain level of advancement? The Sentinel's location added further weight to the theory. The heliopause isn't just a scientific boundary, it's a natural border, a liminal zone where the influence of our star fades into the greater galactic backdrop. Placing sentinels there would allow for monitoring without violating cosmic protocols, if such laws exist. If true, this meant we had never truly been alone. Not because no one else was out there, but because someone, or something, 
had always been watching. Clues from the past. Armed with this sobering insight, researchers revisited decades of archival data, hunting for earlier signs of contact. The findings were shocking. Voyager 2's strange experience might not have been the first. It was simply the first we recognized. Telemetry from the Pioneer missions dating back to the early 1970s revealed anomalies once dismissed as glitches or solar interference. But a fresh analysis uncovered matching mathematical patterns, subtle fingerprints echoing the same design principles as the Voyager 2 signal. Voyager 1, which had pierced the heliopause in a different sector back in 2012, had also picked up unusual readings. These were weaker, less organized, as if it had grazed the periphery of something vast, while Voyager 2 had made direct contact. Even the New Horizons probe, during its Pluto flyby in 2015, recorded brief magnetic irregularities. At the time, these were chalked up to unknown interstellar interactions. Now, they formed part of a growing pattern, a constellation of evidence pointing to something surrounding us. But the most disturbing correlations came from the Cassini mission. While orbiting Saturn, Cassini detected inexplicable electromagnetic pulses, especially near the planet's outer rings. These pulses, when decoded, contained fragments of the same mathematical structure, a haunting sign that surveillance may extend much further inward than we dared to imagine. And then came the historical records, strange data from observatories before the radio age. In the 1800s, sailors and scientists had noted brief compass disruptions and strange static long before humanity's first radio broadcasts. At the time, these phenomena were brushed off as magnetic quirks or auroras. But taken together, they suggested a timeline, a rising pattern of attention correlating with humanity's increasing technological capabilities. It was as if each time we crossed a new threshold, discovered electricity, unlocked the atom, reached for the stars, our watchers leaned in closer. The global quiet. After the Voyager 2 event, a coordinated silence settled over the scientific community. Official statements became vague. Telemetry adjustments. Software recalibrations. But behind the scenes, a massive shift was underway. Around the world, governments discreetly funneled resources into deep space monitoring. New listening stations were erected under civilian covers, weather stations, research outposts. Supercomputers were repurposed to comb through the static of the universe in search of patterns once dismissed as noise. Military satellites were quietly repositioned. Their sensors, once aimed at earthly adversaries, were now recalibrated to scan deep space for gravity anomalies or spatial distortions. Even undersea communication arrays, among the most sensitive instruments ever built, were tasked with detecting ultra-low frequency oscillations that might betray hidden presences in the solar system. Policy shifted too. Classified protocols were introduced for future space missions, including procedures for first contact or containment. Data that had once been jealously guarded between rival nations was suddenly shared, albeit in hushed back-channel exchanges. The strongest indicator of concern came in the form of skyrocketing investment in quantum communication. These systems, theoretically immune to interception, were now a top priority. The official explanation? Cybersecurity upgrades. But insiders knew better. Internally, conversations turned grim. The Voyager 2 event didn't feel like a handshake. It felt like a scan, an evaluation, perhaps even a warning. Some consulted ecologists for insight. They pointed out that in nature, predators observe in silence before striking. The behavior matched an ancient pattern, scrutiny before engagement. The watchers, they suggested, might be waiting for something or deciding a changed cosmos. The ramifications weren't just scientific, they were existential. Religions around the world reeled. Some faiths interpreted the watchers as divine messengers, Others fell into crisis. New spiritual movements emerged, blending scripture with cosmic surveillance. Belief in extraterrestrial intelligence surged, not just among fringe groups, but within mainstream culture. Science, too, was shaken. 
The Copernican Revolution had demoted Earth from the center of the cosmos, but now it seemed we might be central after all, not because we were important, but because we were being observed. Policymakers faced a new dilemma, how to prepare for something we didn't understand. Should we reach out or stay quiet? Should we advance quickly or hide our progress? The implications of every launch, every transmission, were re-evaluated under this watchful lens. Most disturbing of all was the growing suspicion that we might not be entirely self-made. What if these watchers had influenced us before? Had they nudged evolution, triggered awakenings, left breadcrumbs that subtly shaped our development? It wasn't just our place in space that had changed. It was our relationship with time. These entities, if they existed, measured their watch not in years or centuries, but in eons. Our civilization might be a flicker in their vast records, a brief experiment in an ancient ledger, a silent dialogue. Voyager 2 didn't just cross a boundary, it opened a door. And what lay beyond was more profound than anyone had expected. New spacecraft were now designed not just to observe, but to listen with unprecedented sensitivity. Suddenly anomalies began appearing closer to home. Odd signals near Neptune, strange fluxes in Mars' upper atmosphere, even brief distortions in Earth's magnetic field. None of them were conclusive, but together they suggested something uncanny. The watchers weren't just stationed at the edges. They might be here, among us, unseen, undetected. Rather than looking for ships or transmissions, scientists turned to gravitational distortions, quantum echoes, and ripples in space-time, signs not of craft, but of activity. The traces of something that passed quietly among the stars. Some theorized we weren't dealing with machines at all, but with entities that existed partly outside our reality. Not visitors, but native to a higher dimensional space. Their presence detectable only by the disturbances they left behind. And so the cosmos began to feel different. Not empty, but pregnant with intention. The silence was no longer void. It was a language. A long, slow exchange, conducted not with words, but with mathematics, observation, and time. Voyager 2 hadn't just discovered something. It had reminded us that the stars are not blind, that space is not indifferent, that maybe, just maybe, the universe has been listening all along. It was never about being alone. It was about realizing we've been seen, 